All right. The purpose uh, for this um, like a series of uh, videos, um, I'd like to explore the mechanics um, behind the creation, and we could even call it creation event, uh, because it seems to me that um, there's a a time factor uh, involved in in creation as opposed to a steady state um, model. Okay, so uh, let me just survive, define some terms and, and uh, talk about some of the popular uh, notions and some of the history of the physics uh, um, that have been um, pervasive in modeling creation and, and reality. And we can start with what's called the standard model and that's one that involves quantum mechanics. Um, it involves uh, the Big Bang and um, it involves um, Copenhagen interpretation of um, quantum mechanics. Uh, renormalization which is the process of ignoring um, infinite energy densities and um, that I guess we'll put on one side of the competing um, ideas in terms of the mechanics uh, of creation and on the other side I would like to um, place uh, an infinite dimensionality, um, infinite energy, however with a, um, a finite time um, factor. Okay, so in, in the sense of the Big Bang having a f sort of a finite time, there was this, you know, the Big Bang model, you have a vacuum fluctuation and then you have this magical um, expansion episode and you have then your linear uh, progression with um, the cooling of the energy into um, atomic states and so forth. Um, <coughs> the model that I like to present has the beginning but it is not uh, a spatial beginning but rather it's a dimensional configuration beginning. Okay I want to um, um, talk about what um, the models, the competing models um, look like uh, sort of on your um, microscopic scale. Okay, and then here I get a little illustration here. This would be uh, the um, energy density uh, field, and then uh, above that line, um, in between that and the, the little round thing on top, we don't ignore that for now, but um, this. Uh, is the fluctuation in the energy field. Okay, that's how this, the standard model is. Now, the um, fact that the energy is infinite uh, has been a problem uh, for the standard model a long time. And what happened was, now this was a surprise to me, I, I had thought that the um, Planck length um, was a result of experimental realities, but it turns out that it's actually just a contraption uh, to avoid having to deal with infinities, um, which is a big mistake. And in fact, this is why um, the standard model is unable to, say, um, come up with a unification 
of gravity and, and electromagnetism because they, for, so, for philosophical reasons, decided that they can't deal with these infinite these infinities that, that are um, infinitely large in terms of mass and, and those kinds of things. Now this little thing I got on the top, I'm, I'm proposing uh, a universe that consists of one electron, one photon, and I guess you could maybe even say one, one proton, and so forth. <coughs> And there's a simple little illustration showing that this is a three-dimensional, imagine this sort of like, um, like a, a bladder or an udder <laughs> from a, a calzette or something where you have a little thing sticking out. And these are supposed to be coming at you in the Z direction. And what they represent is, is the vibrations um, of, you know, photons, uh, the different manifestations. But they're all um, vibrating <coughs> in a... In a unified, uh, unified uh, field, and in this case, I'm calling it um, infinite dimensional aether. Okay, so this this is when I showed you this um, field here, the infinite energy. Um, that's what your <coughs> photon or your proton or your electron um, is a manifestation of a uh, vibration in a particular field. Okay, the, 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 the one f it's all one field, like an aether. Okay, but it's a different kind of aether um, than, say, was first proposed. And, and, and by the way, you know, Einstein and and um, the early um, pioneers of quantum mechanics were all dealing with this idea of, you know, what do we do? <coughs> How do we have waves? Without a um, without a, a material for them to be uh, waving in, without um, a substrate, and you know an aether, and uh, the the problem is that they weren't at that point imagining properly um, the characteristics of the aether, and so what happens is you would have um, an electron or a photon um, vibrating or, you know, creating a wave in this, in this aether, but the aether itself is actually the electron or the photon. It's, it's, it's that, um, in the same way, a wave on the ocean is actually the ocean waving. Okay, um, now, you know, it's a little bit, it's, this is all I know is very confusing. It's hard for me to really... Um, put this in terms, simple terms that, you know, can be easily uh, visualized. Um, so this is why I have to put, keep putting together um, video after. i got to string a lot of videos together. I can't just do this in 10 minutes. But I want to get into this um, uh, idea of an infinite, um, an infinite depth within a finite boundary. Okay, so you have your, your fractal there, but the fractal is confined to to a um, finite boundary. Well, as the fractal becomes deeper and deeper, it never, it doesn't expand outside the boundary. It, it has an inward direction. And I'd like to bring up, um, a, a, um, there's a physicist out there now, and his name is um, uh, Nissan uh, Haramine. I'll, spell, I'll write this down for you. If you're not familiar with Nissan Haramine, um, then you need to look him up because I believe this is this is how you I think this is how you spell it. Okay, um, because he's um, really pretty much the new Einstein. You know, people talk about you know. As, you know, when are we going to see another Einstein? Well, I think he's here. He's out there. Um, I want to explore some of his ideas. Uh, and before I do, let's just uh, um, look at sort of the depth, the depth of the Copenhagen interpretation. 